Come on, woman. You said you had to go to the bathroom. Now go to the bathroom. Ugh. Yeah, I know it's not perfect, but you need to use it. It's just use the toilet. Come on. Ugh. Ugh, you're impossible. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Socio Psycho, and today we take a look at Whispering Willows, a game created by Nightlight Interactive. It's a adventuring light in a story with some really minor puzzle elements mixed in there. Available on PC, Mac, and Linux. How does it handle? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, let's find those things out, shall we? When we start into the settings, now you have all your controls and the game is very simplistic in a way that you move around the game. I haven't found any issues in that regard as it's been pretty simple although it would have been nice to actually have key rebindings and unfortunately they do not. In the audio you have your SFX and music. It's all pretty simple as you can see. It's always nice they have that. The music in the game is actually very well done and it helps propel the atmosphere to a T as the game is a horror-esque theme, but not really a horror game. It's an adventure game just in a little spooky-tastic atmosphere, nothing really all that intriguing. Your brightness and different languages. Video, and you do have different screen resolutions, so there's that. And the graphic quality of the game is actually very easy as the game crashes to me. Okay, well, the game just crashed on me, so that was a bit uh, annoying. I was about to say that the game didn't really have any issues in the graphic or performance area, and the crash I did have, that's the second time in regard to switching with screen resolution size. Other than that, in-game there hasn't been any clipping, tearing, and it's been running at 60 frames per second with no issues at all. But if you're in the options menu, it does have a tendency to be a little fickle. And you have your diary and your notes in the game. And as you go through, you pick them up. And it adds to your lore of the game. Because that's how the story is really told. In game, there's not much conversation or dialogue that happens. And the majority of the game, the background story and everything else, does arrive from the notes and reading and understanding what the world is and who is in the world. And you also have your diary, which is just another version of your way of expressing how you interacted with the world. It's not anything amazing, but it does what it needs to be to just try to help out in the perpetuation of the game and the immersion of your character to try to drag you in more into the world. But it is heavy in reading, so if that's not your thing, then it's probably a strike against this game right there. Now, when we go into the actual game itself, Let's talk about the graphics. Now the game is 2D and it is fully hand drawn and it looks quite beautiful. It's not the most beautiful thing I've seen, but it has a certain charm of its own and a certain aspect or atmosphere that kind of just makes it feel like its own. It has perhaps maybe a cartoonish feel to it, perhaps an anime feel looking to it. It's not bad and it has its own character, like I said. The one part about the graphics that I don't like is actually the legs on the character. And while it's not a huge deal, it did bother me for a while. I was just like, oh, these legs are just horrible. Whenever you move or walk, they look like some 70-year-old vertical vein infested cop who's overweight. The legs look pretty bad, but everything else in the game I feel looks pretty good. And like I said, it's been running with no issues, minus a few crashes in the options menu. The atmosphere upon the world, graphically, does keep a theme. Now, the game is not a horror game and maybe a little bit of a spook at first. As I went through the game for the first hour, I was intrigued by the atmosphere. As you come across different ghosts, and each of these ghosts add a little something to the story. Now, they don't really have much in-depth conversation by themselves, as, like I said, majority of the conversation does come from the actual picking up of the notes and finding out the lore through that way, through reading. The ghosts do tell just minor little things, but they're more like story progressional points and turning in items to them, rather than anything that really helps propel the story too greatly. Now and again, a character may say something, but if you've been reading the notes that you pick up, you've already know what he's about to say. So it's not like they relinquish any information that you can't get elsewhere. Well, the ghost animations are actually very nicely done. 
you have the capability due to this little necklace that you wear to have a sort of out of body experience as your character is able to progress through the different zones in a ghost form. I don't know if you really want to call them puzzles or just part of a level design, but I would assume it'd be safe to call them puzzles due to the fact that you can't get past a certain area unless you go through a little crack in the wall to unlock a door or some variation. Your out of body experience is very important in how we integrate it with the level design for you to actually be able to get through the maps and your ability to have this feeling of like, wow, my character looks good and it's moving around and it feels good is always sort of urged by the fact that there's not enough things in the game for you to really interact with while you're in your ghost form. Now, there are some points where you can move objects around, such as a dresser or you know, maybe a knife or something small. But it has this real lack of feeling outside of the theme of the game that there's really all that much point to your ghost. The ghost aspect of your character doesn't really feel like it has much purpose. It's integrated into the theme of the game well. You can only talk or see ghosts when you're in ghost form. Yeah, that's okay. And you may need to get around some of the nooks and crannies in the level design that you can only do in ghost form. But outside of that, there seems to be a real disconnect as the game doesn't really do a good job of explaining why or how you're able to do this ghost ability and make it really feel like it's definitely prevalent to your cause. The game acts more casual like, hey, this is something that you can do and it's normal. And it's like, well, how did this come about? Have I always had this ability? Is it just because of the amulet? Is it because of this area? There are unanswered questions when it comes to the character itself and they put a lot of information into explaining about what happens with the rest of the world but it doesn't really turn upon how your ghost interacts with the background story and the purpose regarding yourself. And this is only made more prevalent by the fact that there are monsters in the game. Now the monsters range from different things but you can't really use your ghost aspect to help you in any regard. It's just simply get out of the area, which is very easy to do. The monsters are actually very simplistic in their ability to get away from them. It's not anything that's really spooky or scary. The music in the game builds a suspense towards the monsters for such a long point that eventually when you do find one, you're like, um, okay, hello monster. And you can see that even when you do die from a monster, that the progress that you lose as there is no save ability in the game, so it saves by checkpoints of zones, you go into a new zone and the game will save, you don't lose all that much progress majority of the time. And so the monsters end up feeling just really weak or sort of empty rather than anything of true value. Instead of them trying to make it feel like, oh wow, this place is dangerous, I need to be careful, there's a dark secret here, you just feel like, oh, well, I guess what I'm looking for is not here, I'll move right along. The death is a joke, and the monsters follow suit with that because of it. Which ties heavily into the level design, because the level design is not anything that's amazing. Now, graphically, yes, it looks good. And how they integrated some of the, well, I have to turn into a ghost and fly through a crack in a wall and move through a little area to get where I need to is well done. The issue comes down from the fact that they overuse these basic mechanics. The levels are very large, or the zones, or however you want to look at it. The problem with this is the fact that whenever you're inside a building, you're forced to walk nice and slowly, as if it's trying to waste your time, or you're unable to actually run as you are outside, and this really becomes an issue. The level design doesn't tie itself around into a circle. It's more like go across the building, up the stairs, across the building, up the stairs, across the building, and you're on the third floor. But then to get down to the bottom, you have to follow the same path you took. There's not an easier way out and some variation of that. So if you're looking for an object in the game, whether it be something for a quest or you're looking to just talk to somebody or you're even not sure where to go, it suffers from this issue of really dragging out how much space it has in a manner where it feels like it just doesn't respect your time. And that's really unfortunate because the game looks beautiful and the atmospheres which they tie together, the abandonment feel, the gloomy feel, the forest feel, it's all really well done. But unfortunately, the level design is very maze-like. And while the mazes aren't an issue, 
it can be a very deterrent for some people. Now you can even remember wherever you need to go, or you can hand write out a map and where all the characters are, so if you need to find somebody, you have a reference of where that is. But the puzzles don't help in this regard either. The majority of puzzles you come across are either go through the wall, flip a switch, and a door opens. And a few they do have, whether it be manipulate a clock or some variation, they are very simple. Now it's not insulting, the puzzles don't insult you because you do require to have information in order to complete them. So you have to have at least read or paid attention to what's going on around you in order to actually be able to get through the puzzle. But the puzzle is at the same time very easy and a child could easily get through it with no problem. And when I say child, I mean somebody like 8 years old. When you tie all these factors into the story and the quests of the game, it really becomes an even stronger deterrent because the story and the level design go hand in hand together very well. Unfortunately, the area that they excel in together is a very linear, drawn out, time wasting, maze like annoyance more than anything else. The story will be compressed over many fetch quest type ordeals. Hey, Welcome and thank you for coming. I need this object or finding this object or you cannot progress until you have this one object. Now I have to go and fetch that item, then bring it back to a ghost. And then that ghost will then say, okay, thank you. And then I have to go to another ghost and bring another item back. But it's like, wait a minute. I was at point A talking to a ghost that I needed to get an item for it. He directed me to point B and then I went back to point A and now he's saying I have to go past point B to go to point C to get an item and say like, why, why didn't I just do that in the first place? It's stupid. He doesn't allow you to really expand upon where you are. There have been many times where I see what I need to do and I understand what I need to do and what I need to do but it has this very direct pathway of you have to talk to these three people before what you are able to do unlocks. And what I'm talking about is something as simple as, okay, there are some weeds here. You need a creature to get through these weeds. You can't use your ghost form to get through the weeds. You need to find a creature. Okay, I've passed where the creature spawns 40 times, but the creature will spawn after I collect these two flowers. But these flowers don't summon him, they don't help progress the story forward in that regard. So it's like, what's the point of this? Why does he only spawn after I find the second flower? Why couldn't he spawn first and when me still look for the second flower? It doesn't make sense. And there's a lot of that where it drives you back and forth because you have to do it in a very specific manner. And it's not the case of where, oh, I am going to explore an area, find a bunch of items, collect these items, put these items together, and then use these items on the world. No, it's not like that. You find one item, you use that item in an area, and then that item's gone. Then something else unlocks, when you have to do a scavenge quest, again, to find another item, and it's just this really repetitive motion. So, at the end of the day, it's really hard for me to actually recommend this game. The level design is very maze-like, the story while it does have depth in its character of a backgrounding so you understand what's going on, it really doesn't tell any information about the character that you're playing as, and it really lacks any immersion into it. The puzzles are a joke, and there's really not that many, there's very few. The ghost animations and the aspects and the graphics look great, but it's dulled down by the monsters and the threat that you feel. After about an hour in, the curiosity and the immersion of waiting for the game to pick up fell off and the longer I played, the more repetitive the game became because it didn't actually increase in its value of, hey, look at what else we can do or you're in danger. It just was like walk, 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 find item, walk back to ghost, give item, go to another ghost, find item, give back to that ghost. It was like, oh. Oh, no. The game has a good theme to it. And if you're a really casual player, then maybe you'll enjoy this. But for what it has in it, I cannot recommend it. I was not impressed at all about the adventure qualities of the game. And the story was very lacking in its ability to actually grab you in and make you care about what's going on. When you keep up a theme of fear or dread or suspense like oh no this area is dangerous or what's gonna happen and you start off on a strong note and you're like okay this looks interesting but then you tivy off 
and the game just pitters out and you're left doing the same repetitive nonsense again and again, it just becomes frustrating and the game does not respect your time. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, isn't it? At the end of the day, it just does not respect your time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching for Ivan Socio Psycho and I'll see you next time.